Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel where today we are talking GR Yaris or more specifically the new Toyota GR MN Yaris that you might have seen has just launched the even more hardcore version of this very exciting hot hatch. Now the GR Yaris has been in the Shmi mobiles and with the collection now here at the Shmi Museum for about a year and a couple of months we've done a fair few modifications to it overall but I want to take a look at some of the details of the new car and consider and answer the question from many of you of whether I would upgrade from this into the new one, and it's probably quite a simple answer. I will get to the upgrade question in just a moment, but here in Europe, and especially in the UK, where we have small roads and very tight parking spaces, we rather like our hatchbacks, particularly hot hatches, hence in my collection having the Mark III Focus RS Heritage Edition and the little GR Yaris. Now these, for Toyota and their motorsports division, Gazoo Racing, have proven to be immensely successful. Demand has been through the roof. It's a very, very capable car, a lot of fun to drive, and there are all that many of them. It was introduced to be the homologation special road going version of their intended WRC car, the World Rally Championship return, which sadly never happened. But somehow the crazy team at Gazoo Racing still managed to bring these out as a road car with plans to make 25,000 of them. Now they have been so popular and demand so high, even though you can't actually buy one in the United States, for example, that you either have to wait a very long time to take delivery of one or pay list price or even perhaps with a premium for a car that's now a little bit over a year old which in this segment is absurd and almost never heard of before. Now prior to even taking delivery of this I remember seeing already spy shots of an even more hardcore version out doing testing at the Nürburgring for example and in other locations and that a few days ago has been revealed as the new GR MN Yaris returning that name which actually was on the previous generation Yaris I think about five years ago or so as well. Now the big question that all of you guys have been asking me am I going to be upgrading from this GR Yaris to the new GR MN Yaris and it's a very short answer to be honest and that is no because the new car you might not have realized is actually only for the Japanese market, the homeland of Toyota. There are going to be 500 of them in total, which is not an awful lot. And to get one of those is actually going to be through a lottery system. Whether you've had 10 of these or never even owned a Toyota, you have to enter your name and hope that you get lucky in the lottery. And when I say lucky, they are actually quite expensive. We'll go through all of the details and the prices as well, and you'll see what I mean, and contemplate whether actually it might even be better to buy one of these and upgrade it. Let's have a run through of the details. There is no denying that the new GRMN Yaris looks like a beast in the circuit pack configuration and with the steel gray paintwork that you get with that, you also have the fixed spoiler at the rear and the exposed CFRP bonnet or hood. It just looks like this dialed up even more. Now there's one thing that I find slightly ironic about the car, which is actually the name itself, GRMN, and what that stands for. It's actually Gazoo Racing, tuned by the Meister of the Nürburgring, the green hell in Germany. And I say ironic because the car isn't even available in the German market, which I find a little bit amusing. Maybe something equivalent or perhaps a different iteration will be in the future. That remains to be seen. But of course, it's lower, it's wider, it's stiffer. It actually has a rear seat delete. It has Recaro seats up front and a lot more details that we can run through. To give you some of the numbers, it's a 10 millimeter ride height drop, a centimeter, it's a 10 millimeter width in increase as well. You have a stiffer body through many more welding points, stiffer adhesive as well, and it actually manages to save 20 kilos despite that by having the Recaro bucket seats up front, the rear seat delete, and a few mechanical changes too. So you've got a mechanical limited slip diff instead of the torsion differential. You've got an update to the gearbox using stronger components, but also closer ratios from first through to fourth and a shorter final drive to make it feel even more lively. The bodywork, as I mentioned, with CFRP, carbon and fiber reinforced plastic for the bonnet, for the roof as with the standard GR Yaris and for the fixed spoiler. And the one thing I also find a bit funny is with the circuit pack configuration, which looks amazing, those are only going to be possible for 50 
of the 500 cars. Only 10% will have that matte steel paint where the 18 inch BBS wheels have the adjustable Bilstein shocks and obviously the carbon spoiler and the body kit. But as well as the circuit pack, there will also be the rally pack option, which gives you the GR suspension upgrade, a protective under tray, and also a roll bar. Obviously with the rear seat delete, you get the structural bar across the rear of the car as well. But what I also find quite interesting is where the prices of the car sit. The entry price for the GRMN Yaris without the circuit pack is about, if you translate it to British pounds, £47,000. If you upgrade it to full specification, it's £55,000. For some perspective, my Lotus Emira, which is a mid-engine supercharged V6 sports car, serious sports car, only comes in at about £80,000. The RS3 that we have as our team car, the RS3 saloon with its turbo five pot and significantly more power, we'll talk about the engine in a moment, is about £60,000. 55 grand for a Yaris is big, big, big money. It reminds me of the uh, Renault Megane special Nürburgring edition they did as well. It's mad. These start, the GR Yaris starts at about 30 grand. Give it the circuit pack, 33 and a half. Give it the pearl white paint, you're at 34 and a half, which is about the start money of the Focus RS. I paid 35 for the Focus RS. This has the 1.6 litre turbo three pot. In the UK, they're slightly detuned. We have 257 brake horsepower. The Japanese cars have 268 brake horsepower. And the GRMN actually has the same amount, although it does have a little bit more torque. It goes up from 370 newton meters to 390 newton meters and presumably with the shorter ratios will also have a slightly faster acceleration time than the 5.5 seconds 0 to 62 that this quotes but that's a lot of money and it makes you wonder if you compare modifica modifications or modifying your GR Yaris from 34 grand up to 55 you can do a lot for 21,000 pounds you might not be able to make the chassis stiff in the same way but you could do a lot more. Anyway, let's pull this out, go for a short drive and discuss a bit more about this. A few quick words about the modifications that I've made to this GR Yaris, which started with the livery inspired by playing in my youth on the Sega Rally and driving the Celica GT4 in its Castrol livery, but adapting it for the shape of the hatchback, which we did with Dove Customs, and it was not the easiest to try and fit everything, but looks pretty good, especially when combined with the Giacuzzo styling kit that we did at Evolve with the front lip, the side skirts, diffuser inserts, and the fixed wing up at the top of the rear window as well. Of course, we have the car here, on the SeaTech Smart Charger, as always, to keep the batteries in good shape. Inside, we've done some modifications as well. The key has the GR logo on the back of it. Just unlock this, pop it open to unplug the battery charger, but also the Stern Performance rear seat delete. So we've got the carbon strut bar across the back, the carpets, everything fitted very nicely and tidily. This just unclips in here. Super easy to do that. Leave it in the garage. I want to come around though and show you in the engine bay. We've got the Miltec non-resonated exhaust system, larger tailpipes back there, sound amazing. If we pop open the bonnet very quickly and come round to this to open it up, find a catch. We've got that lovely Aventuri carbon intake and all the red Samco hoses that you can see within as well to match with the red on the exterior. That looks awesome and it sounds awesome as well close that back down. So let's go get this started and head straight out. It's winter time, of course, so it's quickly getting dark. Don't want to miss the last of the daylight. Listen to this. Not bad, not bad at all for a little three pot. Right, let's go drive. One of the reasons for being out in the Yaris today is my usual two month rule. Because of being away for five or six weeks of the last two months, the car hasn't been driven much recently. So I wanted to take it out for a drive just to get everything flowing. We actually are pretty low on fuel, so I'm gonna need to put it back up before we get back to base as well. But just a gentle cruise in the countryside. I'm gonna pop it into sport mode. We've got about 2000 miles on here. I confess I've not really driven it all that much. Nothing like as much as I originally intended because certainly I wanted to take it over to the Nürburgring at some point but all of the travel restrictions have meant that I've basically been in places where I've got business going on but also where travel has been possible and I've spent very little time at the Nürburgring in the last year other than the Black Series tour with all of the AMGs which was fabulous but every time you get back in here you're quickly reminded how good it is. Now before we put the Miltec exhaust on I'm not gonna lie all you heard inside 
was basically computer sound piped in. It is much, much better thanks to having a proper exhaust. But if you just slow it down, blips and shifts, you can do it automatically, but I prefer to do it myself. This is where you can rev it out and have some fun. One thing I really don't like, though, is what you just heard, the beeps. I probably should turn that off. As soon as it thinks you're crossing the white lines like this, it starts beeping away at you, even though you're basically just touching them and sometimes if you're driving, it's the more advanced, correct line to slightly cross the white line. So it is kind of what it is. It's not, you know, a crazy loud thing other than how it looks with the livery on the exterior, but it's just so engaging. And you know, the GRMN is going to be even better out of the box, right? It's gonna be even more dynamic, even stiffer. Not necessarily sure down an English lane like this where it's already quite bumpy, if that's a good thing, but hey, it's all in the pursuit of lap times and performance, and these are really tunable as well. Now, I've not done anything particularly to the power. We haven't put out crazy numbers. I think there are already some of these running 500 plus horsepower without too much stress. Oh, this is exactly where it's at home. A nice twisty section through the trees. Grip for days, way more grip than you can imagine, especially on quite greasy roads like this. Not having too much power is better for that. And that's why for the GRMN, it's the ethos of making it you know, more dynamic without making it, or throwing more power at it. The traction light on. I mean, there are very few cars that could get down a lane, like the speed that this could, the speed that this can carry. And shortening the ratios, I'm slightly interested about because I think that's gonna feel like you get through the gears very, very, very quickly. Like very quickly, because it's already pretty quick in this as it is. But down a country lane, it's just a riot. Now between this and the Focus RS, is something I go back and forth on because they're both brilliant cars. The Focus RS has over 100 horsepower more though, which to me puts it, you know, in the class above. It's a different type of thing. It's not really a fair test, and obviously mine being the heritage makes it super special. So I have to confess, I'm not sure if this is gonna hang around for much longer. Like I said, I haven't really had the opportunities in 2020 that I sorry, 2021, that I would have liked to have driven it. And while I've done some modifications, you know, I probably wanted to put more time into it and do a little bit more with it. I'm just gonna spin it around. Being such a small, easy to drive car, it just makes it easy, literally. All you do is chuck it around and do whatever you want with it. And the car will do anything you throw at it. It's Japanese, right? It's not gonna go wrong in a hurry and it can certainly take a lot more than it comes with as standard. So I wonder if a special version or a GRMN style version will arrive in your rev it out. And you actually can rev it out, of course, because you're not in a 600 horsepower supercar. <laughs> and I remember when Misha threw me around the Nürburgring in their GR Yaris, uh, and I tried to solve Ruby's cubes, which was the worst idea I possibly could have done because I felt very, very ill at the end of it. This thing without going over the speed limit is just a hoot. It's just an absolute hoot. Like, this is where it completely wins. <laughs> this is more fun down a road like this than a, um, than a supercar would be. A little bit of the understeer there, but hey, not to be surprised going downhill in this kind of weather. Yeah, it, it, it's a blast to drive. You know, it's an absolute blast. And the GRMN is going to be super cool. And I can see how it will appeal and you know it's just like the idea of the craziness of it and how on earth did that make it through to production how is a major company like Toyota who are more known for you know Priuses and working on hydrogen power and whatever else how did they make a car like the GRMN Yaris somehow they did and it bodes very well also for the Supra down the line too so I think that's kind of my thoughts on drive and, and what it's going to be all about. For now though, I'm going to head back towards base. And we're back where I've left the GR Yaris parked up here at the moment because it got significantly dirtier on that short little run out than I was expecting. Obviously slightly greasy roads, even though not the longest of drives. So I need to get that rinsed up before parking it back properly away. I do think it looks quite cool. It's not as small as you think it is. This is wider, I believe than the Focus RS, or certainly about the same. That's a touch longer, but obviously that's the way cars have gone. It's also quite 
tall. You think of it as a very small car because of the proportions, but it's taller than the RS3 that it's sitting alongside here. But overall, to drive, it's a riot. It's just a car that I think, obviously, the GRMN takes perhaps further than you need to go, because if you're going to do all of the modifications yourself, of that car, I'm pretty sure it would be cheaper than actually buying the GRMN. And obviously there is a, a thing about having the limited edition, you know, something like the STO, for example, you could take a regular Hurricane Evo rear wheel drive and probably make it even quicker than that would be for way less money than the step up of that, which is always going to be a factor. But obviously for me, given they're not going to be selling them here in the UK, there is no option or discussion. I do think though, as I said, that might be heading off shortly. I need to have a little bit of a shuffle around of some of the Schmimobiles, so watch this space in terms of what's going and what's coming beyond what you already know about, perhaps. Anyway, for now, that's all the run out in the GR Yaris. It needed it, and a first look at the new GRMN Yaris as well from Toyota and Gazoo Racing. Thanks for watching, and thank you for your support as always, guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!